Hello, Rob McNeely here, and um, I've had a number of people express some interest in learning more about uh, follow-up sessions and how what we've been exploring, what do you like, what do you like about it, what's the problem, what's the problem about it, what's missing, and looking for that resource that's missing in the likes and uh, then helping someone to get some uh, resolution of their dilemma. And uh, first of all, I, just to make some general comments, I always assume that when I see someone, that that might be the only chance I have to see them. Uh, I like to uh, get a little bit of information, the kinds of uh, information we've been t talking about and exploring together, then do something helpful, something to help them reconnect with that resource so that then they can get out into their life and get on with it. And I've noticed that sometimes the one session is sufficient to, if someone gets that connection, then they're up and running and then things uh, uh, fall into place. And of course, sometimes they don't. So when I was, I haven't been seeing clients now for 10 years, but when I was in a regular uh, clinical practice, the most common number of times I saw someone was once. And I, I find that, that, that I was surprised at that, but that was often the case. If we can be very precise, very clear together with the client in a respectful, uh, caring way and help them to connect with what they're, what's missing for them, well, of course, once anyone has found what they're looking for, then yeah, that's it. And at the same time, um, although uh, one was the most common number of times I saw someone, I saw a number of clients for five years, 10 years, 20 years, the longest was 30 years. And the question then, uh, and, and it's, it's a recurring uh, question, what do we do when someone comes back for a second or subsequent visit? Now, I've noticed that people come back say for a second visit, and they come back with one of three, uh, three results. They're cured, they're, there's no change, or they're worse. So if someone is cured, if someone says, I'm great, I'm fine, that's it, I'm done, see you later, it can be helpful to help to consolidate that experience by uh, asking them what they might find useful to keep it as a permanent change. And again, when we find out what someone likes to do, that's a rich area to see how someone has learned what they needed to learn in that area so they didn't need to keep practicing or having the problem with it. If someone says, I feel worse than I did uh, last time, then we can explore what was different as a result of our first visit. And if we can find out what, what made someone, what situations, what actions, what activities made them worse, well, we know uh, what not to do and maybe to do the opposite. If someone says, I've been thinking about it more, oh, okay, so maybe it would be helpful to think about it less. If someone says, uh, I'm feeling worse, but I haven't been paying attention to it, so what's missing then might be, oh, well, perhaps it would be useful to pay attention to it. Now, if there's no change at all, and this is really, we, this is the dreaded response, uh, often we get uh, paralysed then, and I found usually it's very helpful to go back to square one. Now, hang, tell me again, what is it that you like? What do you like about it? Now, what's the problem that you're having that you want to do something about? How come that's a problem? And what's missing for you that you, if you had it, you'd be okay? So many times, it's embarrassing to remember this, but we're all human. So many times when I've asked that a second time, the second visit, where there's been no progression, I remember, oh, that's what they said the first time. But I'd gone off in my tangent because of, oh, yes, I know, I'm wise, I'm experienced, blah, blah, blah. And I went off in my direction. No wonder it didn't make any difference. So getting back to square one and listening again 
with more attention, more caring, more uh, uh, focus, sometimes gives us the clue to what we missed in the first, what was missing for us in the first uh, uh, session, so then we can attend to that. But even if someone uh, says, you know, I'm feeling better, uh, there's been some improvement, but I'm not there yet. You know, I'm, I'm making some progress. Things are not so bad or they're a little bit better. So then we can ask the same, a variation of the same question. What's still missing for you? And when we ask that question, so there's been some improvement, what is still missing for you? Usually, if we listen, that gives us an opportunity to uh, what to focus on in this second or subsequent session. And again, if we find out what's still missing, there's still something missing. There's always something missing. If we find out what's still missing, then we can go looking for that within the experience that someone likes to do. Uh, and uh, uh, that even even if we see someone for five or ten or fifteen or twenty years, uh, and uh, we we keep that the keep that uh, focus on what is still missing for you, then that will keep us on track. And you know people are different. Sometimes people come, they have one session. And they're, they're up and running. Some people actually don't even get to the first session. They ring up for, the, for an appointment. And just the expectancy of seeing uh, someone for some help uh, gets things moving. And some people take a long time. So the same principle i found applies for every session, for every person I've ever seen. We're always exploring... What is missing for you at this moment that if you had it, that you'd be okay? And that may be the same experience that we just need to spend more time consolidating, developing, exploring, uh, extending. Or it may be that someone says, uh, oh, uh, I'm having trouble sleeping and that what was missing was, was being quiet at night in my thinking so I could go to sleep. Okay, so we have a session. Uh, and they come back and they say, oh, I'm sleeping a bit better, but actually I'm not, I'm not feeling rested in the morning. Okay, so that's what's missing, feeling rested. So we can explore that. <clears throat> or someone says, I want to lose weight, and uh, they come back and they say, oh, I'm losing weight, but I'm feeling irritable. So what's missing? Maybe accepting, or the, there may be something else that's missing. So um, sometimes it's the same experience that's missing. We just need to chip away at and learn and support them to learn at their own pace. And sometimes we move from here to there and, and the what's missing changes over time. So my invitation is to just keep that question, what's missing? And in subsequent uh, sessions, what's still missing? And to use that as a guide to help to clarify our focus and the focus of our work with, with our clients. So I hope that gives some, um, some clarity, some ideas, some possibilities for you to play with. And if there's any, anything else, please let me know. Now, I want to be clear that in these short videos, we can't cover all, um, all that there is to know about this. You know, I've been doing this work for 40 years and I'm still learning, but uh, I teach uh, longer programs lasting a year or two years and we can't condense all of that into just a few minutes. And at the same time, I think if you take the principles that we're exploring here, and you play with them, and you explore them in your own way, that may well be sufficient for you to do what you need to do. So thanks for listening to this, and please be in touch if there's anything else that I can do to contribute to your learning. Thanks.